So in this video, we're going to talk about rates of change in tangent lines. Um, and one of the fundamental ideas um, of all of calculus is studying the instantaneous rate of change. And so before we can do that, though, we're going to take a step back and we're going to study the average rate of change, ROC for rate of change. And to do this, um, we'll start with a picture. And this is a pretty standard curve, um, just happens to be in quadrant one here. Uh, we'll call it y equals f of x. And we're going to take now a secant line through this curve. There will be our secant line that intersects our curve at two spots. So there's our secant line. And we're going to now label some points. And so our first point, if we come straight down here, we'll call that x. And now the horizontal distance, remember we have a secant line, so we have these two points here where our line intersects our curve. Uh, the horizontal distance between these two points we're going to call h. And if this is x and we move over a distance of h, then our other point would have to be x plus h. All right, so we've got our x coordinates. Now for the y coordinates. So We've labeled this x, but let's think just for a second. What if this was 2? Well, how would you find the y coordinate? You would take the 2, you would plug it into the function, and you would get f of 2. And so in our case, since this is just an x, we're going to get f of x. And similarly, if I take that x plus h and plug it in, now I'm going to get a y coordinate here of f of x plus h. So um, we've really got two ordered pairs now uh, that we're able to identify. We know that slope of our line is going to be the change of y over the change of x. Now remember, we're talking average rate of change. The average rate of change of our curve on uh, or between x and x plus h uh, can be studied by the slope of our secant line. And so the slope of our secant line, m sub sec for secant, will be our change of y, f of x plus h minus f of x, divided by the change of x. Now for the change of x, I could take the big guy minus the little guy here, which you would also see as h, the horizontal distance between the two points. Um, so our denominator here would just be our h. And so that is the slope of our secant line, which gives us the average rate of change. Now I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen um, and adjust my picture slightly uh, to allow us now to investigate the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, so for the instantaneous rate of change, now we're not going to be dealing with two points in a secant line. We want the instantaneous rate of change at one individual point. And so what that now is going to allow us to do is instead of having a, a secant line, now we've got a line that touches our curve in only one spot, and this is called a tangent line. So instead of a secant line, now we have our tangent line. Well, when you look at, even if we call this guy x still, when you look at the previous picture, what is the one thing that is irrelevant in this picture versus the last one? Well, it's h, right? h was the horizontal distance between the two points. Well, now we only have one point, so we don't have an h. And so it's not so much that h is equal to zero. Instead, we say that h approaches zero or h goes to zero. And that's where we actually have to now introduce this idea of a limit. Now, we're going to study limits a lot more uh, later in the course. Uh, but for right now, just purely see it as a notation. The slope of the tangent line now is going to be our limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now, as you look at this, again, don't let the limit notation um, get the best of you here. Treat it as purely notational. And remember how I said h is not necessarily equaling zero. Um, h is approaching zero. And as you look at our difference quotient right here with this limit out in front, it's clear now that this h in our denominator has to be gotten rid of. 
Um, and so in all of the difference quotient problems you've done in the past, um, the goal has always been to get rid of the H, and you may or may not have been told why, but now you can see our H is going to zero. So as we manipulate this, before we actually plug zero in for H, we have to get it out of the denominator. So um, there's the difference between average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change. Generally speaking, average is more algebraic and instantaneous then um, is a big fundamental idea in calculus.